Cause I try to hide you and steal you away And I try to keep you inside of the grave The enemy fought you, he tried but he lost You cannot be silent so glad that you're here with us this morning. Isn't God good? If you are a first-time guest, there should be a connection card in the seat back in front of you. We want you all to fill that out and drop it in the black box on your way out of service this morning. And if you're watching online, we're so glad that you tuned in with us. God's going to move through your house just the same way as he's going to move here. We're so glad that you tuned in. But before we get started with worship, before we continue with worship, I wanted to say a little prayer for us just to just kind of get everything off of our shoulders, off of our chest before we receive God's message. Lord, we come to you today. We ask you to fill this place with your presence, Lord. Move through here, Lord. Leave no one untouched, God. Change them from when they walked in through the front doors this morning, Lord. Don't let them leave without receiving what you have for them this morning. Whatever they've been going through, whatever they're thinking about from this past week, Lord, we know that the past weeks could be stressful. 
what you've been going through. It, it can be stressful, Lord. We ask that you clear that from our minds, Lord. We ask that you reset our focus on what you have for us through this message, Lord. We ask you to change us, Lord, for us to be different. And in, in your name, I pray, amen.
praise and praise you are worthy you are of all honor of all so much for today you truly are worthy of everything and we do give you all the praise and all the glory and honor amen hey Well, good morning, everyone. Worship team will be coming back in a few minutes because of the subject of the message today. But so glad that you are here. And since we are not really hugging and shaking hands, some of us are not anyway, I want you this side, look to this side, this side, look to this side, and just smile and wave at each other. Good to see you all this morning. Good to see everybody this morning. We're going to take a moment at the, before I get into the message, and we're going to pray over our offering, our special offering we've been talking about for our children's remodel, and uh, we're about $3,000 um, under budget, so uh, we believe God's got that. Y'all, that's going to be so phenomenal. I mean, our goal is to have it all completed by anniversary Sunday. And we're going to opening up, opening it up and just celebrate. But I believe you're going to be uh, pleased with what you see. It's going to be such a nice area for all of our children, and uh, so it's it would, just God's going to help us to be able to use um, use that area to reach more kids. And our kids are worth it, Amen. And all we ask you to do is just pray and uh, ask the Lord what He would have you to do. And if you would like to give toward that. Uh, you can give it in the offering box in the back, uh, uh, in the little uh, box back there by the back door. Or you can give it entirely. Either way, if you do it entirely, please mark other and then put children's remodel and the same on an offering giving uh, record, little envelope. If you'll mark other and put children's record. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that uh, you, you have allowed us to reach children. And you have hundreds more that you're going to help us to reach. Lord, put it on our hearts what you would have us to do. And Lord, we know you'll provide. You give seeds to the sower. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for blessing us and allowing us to be a part of this. 
and we give it to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, y'all, we got some exciting things planned. We'll tell you, even next Sunday, we'll make an announcement for youth and, uh, like I said, with the remodel for the children. Uh, we're moving ahead, uh, corona or not. Amen. And because we know God's church is moving ahead, I want to jump in to the message uh, today. Uh, let me first uh, let me say, remind you: prayers every Wednesday night from six thirty to seven thirty. Except that first Wednesday night, we'll at, meet at the same time and have first Wednesday night service with prayer, communion, worship. But uh, come and pray with us, six thirty to seven thirty every Wednesday night. We're believing God for miracles, for revival to move, and uh, I believe he will. You know, uh, has, has there ever been two hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time? Isn't this amazing? Somebody made a comment that only in 2020 can something like that happen. And what I thought about during praise and worship in the first service, I've thought about the scripture that says that there will be, that God will shake everything that can be shaken so that that which cannot be shaken will remain. And I think what we're going through as a nation, as a world, as God's church, as his people, there is a shaking going on. And God is shaking some things loose so that, that those bedrock principles, the things that should guide our life will remain. I grew up, and Dad had a, really a truck patch, a huge garden, if you will, and we grew peanuts. Has anybody ever grown peanuts before? Okay, so to grow peanuts, to harvest the peanuts, you have to pull the whole plant up, and the peanuts grow on the root, okay? So you have to shake the vine to get the dirt off before you pull the peanut. It's the dirtiest job you'll, you'll ever do, and uh, we had to do that growing up. And that's what makes me think, I think about that when I think about the shaking that's going on, that there's a shaking and God is removing some dirt, some things that hinder, so that, that, that fruit, what's good, can remain. And the topic today is one of those bedrock principles, one of those things that must remain in our life as a Christian, no matter what we're going through. Uh, this will be a part two on how to stay up in a downer world. Last week, I told you about some reasons. We have some reasons that we should be happy, that we should be cheerful. Because Jesus himself said, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But cheer up. I have overcome the world. And we talked about some reasons that you and I as Christians should have the joy of the Lord in our heart no matter how bad the trial or the, or the problem seems to be. Well, again, today is one of those principles that will help you to stay up in a crazy, chaotic, downer kind of world uh, like we're living right now. So the verse for today, our key verse, key text, is found in Psalm 68. The Amplified paraphrase says, Sing to God, sing praises to his name, lift up a song for him who rides through the desert. His name is the Lord, be in good spirits before him. Now let me, before we look at that just a little bit further, would you help me to welcome everybody watching online, our church family, joining us in living rooms and bathrooms across the world. <laughs> would you make them feel welcome? We, we're welcome, y'all. <laughs> so I love that because one translation says that when we lift up a praise, it's making a way. We prepare a way for God. So if, if we look at that in that context, that when we lift praises up to God, we make a way for God to ride in to our desert places, those places that are without life, that if we lift God up, he moves into those situations. And when God moves in, everything changes. So if I can sum up this message in one sentence, it would be this, that when we lift God up in praise, he lifts us up over our problems. 
Isn't that so awesome? Not that, not that we should do it for that reason. We should do it because God is good. He is worthy of our praise, correct? But when we lift him up, he lifts us up by his presence. That's the way he does it when we praise him. So this message is titled, Lift Up. And we're going to do that today. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much. We praise your holy name. You are a great God. Lord, we want to learn more. We want to do better at praising you. So today, Lord, would you speak to our hearts? Church, pray it with me. Lord, speak to my heart. Change my life. In Jesus' name, amen. So some words to describe praise is to bless, exalt, extol, glorify, magnify, thank, confess. These are just a few words that describe praise. Praise is to call attention to God's glory. Praise is always up. That's where God is. He is up. That's the reason why the word says, lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes to the hill where your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord. So praise is up. It, it is acknowledging God who is up above all of your problems, all of your situations. Praise is always up. When, if you're taking notes, when you lift praise up to God, he will lift you up above your troubles. How many of you need to be lifted up this morning above some of the things that you're facing? So some of the ways that we're to lift up praise to the Lord, we are to, uh, our praise is to lift up our hands. The scripture says that we are to lift up holy hands to the Lord. You know, the psalmist says this, Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. You know, why do we lift up our hands? Why does the scripture say for us to lift up our hands? Well, when you uh, lift up your hands, it's a sign of surrender to the Lord's majesty, a surrender to him. We lift up our hands like a child that desires to be picked up by a parent. We lift up our hands because we know who our answer is. Amen? We know who the one is that will answer us uh, in our need. So praise is to lift up our hands. Also, praise is to lift up our voices. Psalms 47 says this, Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to joy. Shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He is God, and there is no other like him. So we should shout praises to him. Well, Pastor, I don't do that. I'm not a shouter. Well, we shout about some things we shouldn't have to shout about or shouldn't shout about to the kids, to the wife, to the husband. You know, we may shout then. Uh, we even shout on, on other things. Uh, we, we shout for at concerts, and we shout for sports, our favorite teams. How many of you shout at the TV for your favorite team, acting like they can hear you? And um, they say the uh, uh, baseball, in baseball, that they're actually, since they can't have fans, that they're actually playing shouts and cheers over the speakers so the players can be encouraged when they have a good hit. You know, we don't lift up praises. We don't shout praises to God for him to be encouraged. He doesn't need that. We shout praises to God so we can be encouraged, so we can be reminded, y'all, that we are on the winning side. We're on the winning team in Jesus. So we should shout praises to God, lifting up our praise to him by our hands, with our voices. Another way the scripture says that praise is up, that praise is to lift up our souls. So your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. So we're to praise God in our thinking. 
We're to praise God with our, our submitting our will to his will. Lord, I, I, I want your plan above my plan. Your plan is greater than my plan. We're to praise God with our emotions. You may say, well, I'm not that uh, an, an emotional person. Well, you are with the things that you're passionate about. I mean, if some of us could praise God as much as we praise that deer that we killed, I'm going to step back on that one. Or if we could praise God as much as that, that cell that we found at the mall. Mm-hmm. Y'all going to be quiet on me today. <laughs> and we praise God with the things that are in our heart and we lift up praises. We have no problem with that. Well, we should lift up praises to the Lord because with our emotions to express ourselves to the Lord, to tell him how much we love him and how good he's been to us. He has been good to us. He's been better to you and me than we know of. And the scripture says, Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. All that I am, God, I lift it up to you. And when we lift, again, those praises up to God, he lifts us up by his power. There's a story in the Bible It's a very interesting story. Jehoshaphat, when he was king of Judah, he was told that uh, armies were advancing against him, armies of the Moabites and armies of the Ammonites. And the Bible said that even some of the Mennites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Has anybody had some ites after you? some ites that battle you. Maybe for you, your ites, you have some worryites that are battling you. Anybody got some fearites? What about some brokeites? Anybody got some brokeites <laughs> that, that's battling you? And uh, maybe it's a sickite or two that's coming against you that you have to go to battle. And it's very interesting. Jehoshaphat had all these ites coming against him, and God told him to do something so unusual He said, go ahead and assemble your army, but you will not have to fight this battle because this battle is mine to fight. And um, the thing that we need to learn is so many times, me and you, we fight battles that we don't have to fight. And he said, assemble your army, and I want you to do this, Jehoshaphat. I want you to appoint some men to be praisers. Now, guys, I can just tell you, we need to learn a little bit better about praising. We can learn from the ladies. But we should be praisers too, amen? And he said, appoint some men to be praisers. And he said, put them on the front lines. Put them before the fighting men. And Jehoshaphat did just that. And the story is found in Second Chronicles. It said, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures endures forever. Can you say that with me? Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Let's say it together just a little bit louder. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. His love for you, hear me, it endures forever forever. It endures beyond your past. It endures beyond your mistakes, your failures. It endures beyond the things that you get trapped up in. It endures beyond all of that. His love for you, you should have a thanks well up in your heart when you think about God's great love for you. He didn't leave you where you were. He came after you. He came after me. He sought me down. When he, he who did not need anything acted like I was something valuable to be treasured. He did the same for you. He came after you because he loves you so much. How in the world can we not give thanks and praise to him for his great love for us? And I love it because it said as they... Begin to praise, sing and praise. The Lord set ambushes against the men 
of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, all of those ites, the Lord set ambushes against them who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. You know, God, when he defeats your enemy, he defeats them good. There's only so much me and you can do, and, and some of the battles that we fight, we just stir the enemy up a little bit more because we are limited. But when you get God on your side fighting your battle for you, you can just go ahead and count it done. You hear me? You can just go ahead and celebrate like you will never see that enemy again. And it says, when the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert, there's that desert again where God rides in on when we praise, and looked toward the vast army that was against them, they only saw dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. Mm, that's good stuff right there, ain't it? I mean, Hollywood can't create a better movie than that, right? I mean, that God destroyed the enemy, but it gets a little bit better. Verse 25 says, So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. Mm -mm -mm. Now, you know, I don't know if those praisers on the front lines, if all of them were dedicated to the job. I don't know. I might have been a little nervous, too, to be in front of the fighting men going out and uh, against the enemy without a weapon in my hand. I mean, I don't know if many of them were feeling the pra <laughs> praise that they were saying they might have been a little bit more worried and keeping their eyes open real careful to, you know, because they're going out in front of the army, but they're praising anyway. I don't know, again, if their heart was in it, but I think it's in it now when they start collecting the plunder. I believe they are expressing praise way down, way down to their toenails. They begin to think, thank you, Lord, their your love, your, your goodness to me. I don't know what song they begin to sing, but when they begin to collect that plunder, it said, on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Barakah, where they praised the Lord. That is why it's called the valley of Barakah to this day. Well, the valley of Barakah means the valley of blessings. So they went from a valley of battles to a valley of blessings. And can I tell you, praise will Change your battles into blessings if you'll just lift up praise to the Lord and give it to him. Now, that's good. How many of you fa are facing a battle today? You got a battle in your life. Well, I would say put praise out in first. Put praise out in front and watch God come on the scene and bring you up out of that thing. Amen? I am preaching better than y'all are responding. But that's all right. We're going to carry on. Whenever you're facing a battle, the best thing you can do is lift up praise to God. This is, you know, sometimes the battle is obvious. Sometimes the warfare is obvious. Sometimes it's just a little thing. I mean, and I may not catch it. Satan can slip one thing in, and I may not even see it to be him. But every now and then he gets foolish, and he slips two or three bad things in at one time. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And it begins to be obvious, oh, this is the devil. People try to steal your money. And over and over again, then it begins to be real obvious. And that's the worst thing he can do is to make it obvious to the Christian who has praise in their heart. Because, again, if we have that as our bedrock, we understand that the battle belongs to the Lord and we are on the winning side. So if, for me, I can't tell you I do a great job at this all the time. But when I see the battle is obvious, when I see the enemy is obvious, I just stop and I just start singing praise to the Lord. And I may not feel it at the moment. It may be just because, I may be like the men on the front line just doing it because I know I'm supposed to. But it don't take long for the God's presence to show up. And when his presence shows up, everything changes. He lifts us up out of the place that we're in. I'm so thankful. Let me give you five powerful principles of praise. If you're taking notes, write down the first one. Praise acknowledges God's supremacy. You know, I tried to look for a better word. I couldn't come up with one. Supremacy 
is being superior to all others in authority, power, or status. Praise is to declare God's greatness in your life. It is to acknowledge God's authority, his power, his status as being superior over, other, over all other power and authority in your life. When you begin to praise God, it is acknowledging his greatness in your life. You know, King Jehoshaphat, he was a king, but he was not God. And he humbled himself to God's power and authority, and he put praise first. And because he did that, God received his praise, and he blessed his praise. Praise acknowledges God as your God. Psalm says this. I'm, I'm preaching loud today like an evangelist up in here. But it's, I said my heart today. It's got to come out. Psalm says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. Hmm, look at this. I will praise your name forever and ever, every day. I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. And this is the reason. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. I hope you realize that God is, no one is greater than God. And the, and the scripture teaches us another word for praise is to magnify the Lord. Have you ever thought about that? That really doesn't make sense. How can I do anything to make the Lord bigger? Well, there's nothing that you and I can do to make him bigger. <laughs> he is without need. He is, the scripture in Revelation says that when God comes on the scene, earth and heaven has to move out of his way because there's not enough room for him. So there's nothing me and you can do to add to God's supremacy, to make him bigger. To magnify the Lord means that we need to make him bigger in our own eyes. That we need to understand how great he is. And when we begin to do that and magnify him, he begins to show more of himself to us. Oh, and he, when he begins to show more of himself to you, your natural response is just to praise him more. Praise makes God bigger in our own eyes. Another powerful principle of praise is this. It's an expression of worship. Now, it's similar to point one, but this takes just a little further. You know, in church, we have a tradition in church. We do praise and worship. It's time to enter into praise and worship. And praise is usually the faster songs. Worship is the slower songs. And that's okay as long as we use that to give God praise. But in life, worship comes before praise. Now let me explain. Jesus said that true worshipers worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, in spirit and in truth, this is a life of worship. This is a life lived out following the Spirit of God, and our actions match that life. It's a heart devoted to God. This is the way we worship. In other words, Christians are called to 24-7 worship. Our life, the way we live, is a worship to the Lord. Now, praise the way I see praise Praise is the voice of that worship. It, is, it comes from the heart of worship, so we voice out our praise. It's the language of worship. And praise comes from worship. Now, can you praise and not be a worshiper? Yes, you can. Jesus said it this way. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You can give a you can sing, anybody can sing a song of praise, but worship may not be your life. It may not be in your heart. I remember as a youth pastor, I had a, we had a block party, and um, I'm telling you, if Sarah was here, she would remember it, and, and they was, so we had a, a Christian rock band come up, and they were, they were playing and led us in some songs, and it was just a good time, and I got up to preach the message, and the whole, the, the entire Christian band came down to the altar to get saved. <laughs> so you can, you, can, you can sing a praise, but it won't be from your heart. 
And God doesn't really receive that. It's possible to do that. But hear me. It is impossible to have a heart that is devoted to God and a life that is lived out to please him. This is the true act of worship, a life of living a sacrifice to the Lord, giving yourself to him. It is impossible to live a life of worship and not voice out praise to God. You're going to speak out what you're passionate about. It's going to come out. And that is the praise that moves God. Jesus said, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. It's just going to come out of you. Praise to him. Now, let me give you another powerful principle of worship. Number three, praise is the way we show thankfulness. It's not... Praise is not only to declare God's greatness, it is to thank God for his goodness. And a scripture that I love, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You see how you're getting closer to the Lord? You start out being thankful and it just goes right into praise. To me, thankfulness is the foundation of praise. It says, thanks, give thanks to him and praise his name. Why? For the Lord is good. And again, look, his love endures forever. The same song Jehoshaphat's army sang. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So praise is the way that we say thanks to God. The men Jehoshaphat appointed to be praisers, they went before the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. You know, God is moved by thankfulness. Like any parent, when we are thankful, God just look, looks for ways to bless us more. You know, Nick is, he, he, he's smart. He knows how this works. When he comes home from school, I kill the fatted calf for him. I mean, I say, now, buddy, you're coming home. What you want me to cook for you? And he doesn't mind telling me some things he wants me to cook. And he's smart, though, as I cook it up for him. And as he's putting it on his plate, he usually says this, Dad, thanks for cooking for me. Well, you know what that does? I forget about all the work and I forget about the effort that it took. I say, what else you want me to cook for you, son? Because he's thankful. And thankfulness moves me as a parent. And the Bible says if I am, if I have, would do that for my child, even being evil, even being in flesh, how much more would your heavenly father give good gifts to those who love him? And when we love God, we're just thankful. We voice our thankfulness to him. And praise is a way of being thankful to God. And we should be thankful. You should be thankful for all that he's done for you. You should be thankful for the things that he's done for you that you don't even know anything about. How we stopped you with that train and you were in a hurry and you thought it was a bad thing. You don't know the wreck that was waiting for you right up the road. It's, it's the things that you don't even know about that God has kept you from. Uh, a couple of weeks ago with the work day, I went to go get lumber, and I had it in the back of my truck, and I believe tying my stuff down. How many of you men believe tying your stuff down you put it in the back of the truck? You know, my dad, I grew up with dad didn't tie nothing down, and lumber and stuff flying all out the back. I believe in tying my stuff down, Bobby, and I noticed I was coming down Greenfield Road. It was 237 degrees outside. And I noticed one of my two befores moved just a little bit. Can't have that. So I stopped and I worked on it out there in that heat. I was getting aggravated. I, did, I ran out of all my tie straps. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. And I found an extension cord. Does anybody know what I mean? And I tied that lumber up with an extension cord, trying to do whatever I could to keep it in the, <laughs> the back of the truck, aggravated. I got back in my truck and I came on down and got on Whitfield Road and then I noticed the traffic getting slow, and there was a vehicle turned over in the oncoming traffic. And instantly, the thought came to me, that could have been you. 
We don't know all of the things that God has kept us from. One thing we should know, his love endures forever. You should thank God for all that he's done. You should thank him for the things he's done for you. You don't even know about it. He is a good God. And because of the thankfulness of Jehoshaphat's army, God not only defeated their enemies, he gave them blessings. A valley of Barak, a valley of blessings. So much blessing, hear me, it took three days to haul it off. Now, I don't know if, if, it's, um, if, if it took Jesus the whole three days to haul off the plunder from our enemy when he defeated him on the cross. But we got the plunder. We got, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost on that, ain't you? We got the blessing. And the psalmist says this, praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, all of the plunder that he's given us, who forgives all your sins. Now, some of us got to hold that all for a long time. I, 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 I'll do it for myself. All your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Anybody been in the pit? And crowns you with love and compassion. It gets better. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Pastor, why are you screaming this morning? I don't know. It just feel, I feel it in my heart. God has given us plunder. He's not only defeated our enemy, we got benefits that come with it. We should be so thankful today. I don't know what you're facing today, but I can tell you these things that I'm telling you about are greater, far more valuable than anything you're going through. Your praise should be a response of God's goodness to your life. Now, praise is also a mighty weapon for spiritual warfare. And we see that with Jehoshaphat and his army. Their praise caused God to defeat the enemy. But I found another story in the Bible. I've read this account many times, but I never saw it until this week. At the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples, they've already taken communion. He tells them, guys, one of you are going to betray me. He he's already told them that he will have to die on the cross. And before they left the room to face the biggest battle, the, the really the battle of all times, look at what the scripture says. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. That Jesus, before he faced the biggest battle of his life, he spent time giving God praise. Now, I don't know what song that they sung? Wouldn't you like to know what hymn they sung? I know that Amazing Grace had not been written yet, but it was fixed to be written in the flesh. I know that one of my favorites, the old rugged cross, had been put to pen, but it was his mission. He was waiting on it. I don't think Jesus Loves Me was in the hymnal but it was fixing to be displayed for me and you when he stretched his arms open wide. Maybe he sang the same song as Jehoshaphat's army. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Jesus began the fight of all ages with praise and he won victoriously. Praise is a mighty weapon for me and you. When you face battles, lift up praise. Put your praise first. The scripture says, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. This is your destiny as a child of God. If God received the praises of Jehoshaphat's army who were under an old covenant, an old covenant by law, 
how much more will he receive your praise as a blood-bought child of God? And when you lift up praise to him, he lifts you up. That's just what he does. Let me give you number five. Would you stand up and would the worship team come back up? Would you give it up for our worship team and also for our production team that helps make it happen? Would you give it up for them too? <clears throat> we got such an awesome army, I'm telling you. And um, I know as a matter of fact that Drew was up here late last night working and uh, I'm telling you, I, I'm preaching tired this morning, brother, and you're singing tired, and, and it doesn't, your praise cannot be dependent upon how you feel. It really cannot, because God is worth, all the things that I talked about, the reasons that we should lift God up no matter what we're feeling, no matter what we're facing, that God is worthy, I'm telling you. But Drew, when you lead worship, do you feel God giving you some strength to carry on? I know I do, man. When I begin to worship the Lord at home, no matter what I'm facing, I, I sing songs myself. Usually the songs that I were brought up on as a child, back then I thought they were old. And, and like I said, we, we belted those songs out for, to the top of our voices. I couldn't be on the worship team even, even if they wanted me to. But those are the songs that I sing around the house. And I'm reminded of, before I get to number five, I'm going to give you number five, but I'm reminded, I was reminded of this week thinking about praising in circumstances that are difficult. And my sweet mother, I know I've shared this before, but she would be in the cooking. My mom cooked three meals a day. I mean, homemade. My dad didn't want leftovers. I tried that, but that didn't work at my house. No, but my mom, I would say, Mom, don't cook. Don't cook. We didn't have air in our house, y'all. And she would be in that hot kitchen, cooking over a hot stove, sweating. Just got through cooking breakfast, cleaning, doing everything else, working in the field, in the garden, come back in and cooking again. We hardly ever ate sandwiches at my house. She slaved. She really did. She worked so hard. And you would think my mom would be a complainer, but she was a Christian, a worshiper, heart devoted to the Lord. And I can just, I have memories. So many times when I'm cooking in the kitchen, I think about it, Sarah. I think about what my mom did in the kitchen because I heard her. She would sing praises to the Lord. She, we didn't have a dishwasher. And as she was working in that kitchen, Hot, sweaty, tired. She would be singing praises to the Lord. And she sing it joyfully. It wouldn't like. I mean, she, she knew of the God's goodness. And I believe she was proclaiming some things over our family. Don't let your circumstances. I don't know why this is not in my notes. But the, the need to pause right here to say. Don't let your circumstances determine God's praise. Why? Because He is good and His love endures forever. So many of us, we wait till we get to church to sing a praise song. God wants you to praise Him every day. He wants you to lift Him up. You will be glad you did. When you lift Him up, He lifts you up. And that brings me to the last one. Praise is an invitation to God's presence. It's an invitation to God's presence. It's saying, God, I'm going to draw closer to you because I want you to draw closer to me. God, I'm just going to tell you how much I love you. I just want to tell you how, thank how thankful I am. You didn't have to come to that bar to speak to me, but you did. You didn't have to protect my life when I was running from you and cursing your name, but you did. And I just want to tell you, it's, it's an intimacy with God as you express yourself, then God begins to pour out on you. It's an invitation for His presence. He just begins to move closer to you and begins to declare His love for you. The Scripture says this, but you are holy, enthroned 
in the praises of Israel. To enthrone means to install on a throne, being crowned to rule. To be installed on a throne. God's got his throne. But you know me and you also got a throne. It's called our heart. And then when we praise God, we invite him to come on our throne, our heart. And we crown him as the Lord of our life. And we ask him, God, you rule me. You rule my life. And guess what? I don't know why he does. He takes us up at the invitation. I would say you got to get some things straight first. I would say you got to do a better job at this. I would say you know how you treated me last time. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But God moves right on in. And he sits in the throne of your heart and he begins to reign in your life. We don't deserve it, but he does. And the Bible mentions many examples where God honors the praises of his people with his presence, with his manifest presence. And one of my favorite is this, that we're going to praise God some more. But one of my favorite is Paul and Silas. The Bible says that they were in jail for doing good, for preaching, for proclaiming, for doing the work of the Lord. They got thrown in jail. And I, I'm not trying to meddle today, but sometimes we can get sideways at the airing set on 72. Come on, y'all. We can, we can get a little, we can withhold. We can, you know, we're a little tired. We don't give God praise. Well, they're sitting in jail. And the Bible says that they begin to pray and sing praises to the Lord. After they've been beaten, sitting in jail, they begin to pray, sing praises to the Lord. And the presence of the Lord fell in that place. And the Bible says that there was a shaking going on. It shook. And the doors of the jail opened up, but not just theirs, but everybody's doors opened up. Now, this preaches real well in prison. I've preached it before. And the Bible says this, everybody's chains fell off. Not just Paul and Silas, everybody's chains fell off. Well, that tells me that praise when God's presence shows up because of our praise, it gives an atmosphere of freedom. That people that, that are bound in chains, they don't know the answer. Those prisoners didn't know what Paul and Silas were doing. They don't know anything. They didn't know anything about Jesus, but they knew something happened. When those chains fell off and those doors flew open, I believe that they tried to sing a little praise themselves, don't you? And Praise gives an atmosphere of freedom because it draws God's presence in. So just, just two things we're going to pray. If you're here today and you're being chained by some things, when you're chained, it's hard for you to lift a hand up to praise. Them ites can chain you down, you know? And you could be a Christian for, you could be a, a, a Christian for a long time, but you could still get chained up in some areas over fear, worry, unforgiveness, just to name a few, strongholds, addictions, things like that. And, and to me, it's a good sign where I am spiritually um, if my praise is off, if I'm not praising God like I should. It's a good sign to me what's going on in my heart. So maybe that's you today. We're going to pray a prayer of repentance, ask God to forgive us. So you can have them chains loosened up today. You can be free. Okay? And we need God's presence. We need that freedom in every time we come together in this house. Because God will bring people to this house that don't know anything about praise. That don't know anything about God's presence. And because I believe me and you can set the atmosphere of praise where God's presence would fall and there would be freedom in the house. Does that make sense? Let's pray. Will you bow your head just a moment? If you're at home, bow your head. Wow, God wants to move right where you are. Now, this, I'm fixed to bind condemnation in the name of Jesus. Condemnation says that you've done too much. Hear me, condemnation is just a bigger chain. That what you did is a, yeah, it could be a chain, but it can be forgiven. Condemnation is a bigger chain. 
And I'm fixing to bind that. I felt that. Um, I felt like God wants to do that now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to do that first. And if you're suffering from condemnation, you just hang on because I believe God's going to honor this prayer. I want some people that are not suffering in that area to pray with me. And uh, those chains are fixing to fall. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind condemnation. Your Bible says, your word says, Jesus, that whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Father, they are falling under condemnation. They cannot even ask because they, think, they, don't, they don't think they're worthy to. We bind that now in Jesus' name. Lord, let that chain fall. Yes, I feel that one. Yes, condemnation leaves now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, that first chain we can help you with, you got to take care of this other chain, okay? Let's do it together. Let's pray a prayer of repentance. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, I'm sorry, repeat this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. Lord, come into my heart. Be enthroned on the throne of my heart. And, Lord, I will live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you feel that? I feel some freedom in the house. I really do. I just feel a sweet presence of the Lord. I'm so thankful he honors our worship. And that's what we're fixing to do. We're fixing to give him some praise. Look, you'll still have enough time to get to Waffle House. They ain't going to have anything you want anyway. Just wait. They're going to have a seat ready for you. Look, wherever you're going for lunch, this is going to be better than what you can eat in just a moment because we're going to lift God up in some praise, and then I'll come back and close us out in prayer. But let's praise him because his love endures forever. His goodness for our life endures forever. We praise you, Lord. We lift up our hands. We lift up our voices, God. We lift up our hearts to you. You are a worthy God. You are a good God. We praise your name. Let's praise him, y'all. Thank you, God.
I'm going to send you out. I ask them, I'm going to ask them to play us out. There's two things. You got to put praise into your daily life, okay? Maybe for you it's a song that, that you knew, that you know, a praise song that you know, maybe one that we sing, maybe one you heard when you were a child. Maybe for you, you don't have that. Well, the one I gave you earlier, the same song that Jehoshaphat's army sang, thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. You just express that to the Lord. You got to do that daily. I'm telling you, he will lift you up. He will let you know he likes it. Become a praiser in your daily life, okay? I want to leave you with a blessing. Would you raise your hand? Father, I pray you would bless us indeed. Give us more than we need so we can be a blessing. Now, Lord, enlarge our territory. Give ministries out of this place. Help us to reach more people for you. God, fill us with your presence. Lord, we need you. Holy Spirit, baptize us to overflowing and protect us from the enemy, his schemes, his lies, the pandemic. <laughs> Lord God, would you keep us all the days of our life and we're going to lift you up because you are good and your love endures forever go in peace and praise god bless you thank you so much for joining us this morning we hope that this message has blessed you and your family this morning in the book of Mark, Jesus tells us to go out and proclaim the gospel to all of creation. So with that being said, we ask you to share this message so that not only you, but everyone may see it and so that everyone may be blessed. We hope you have an amazing rest of your day and a blessed week.